Today, I want to get a little bit personal because a lot of people ask me a lot of questions that are related to the taxi investment industry or taxi driving industry. But today, I want to address questions that people have put forward to me at personal level. So apart from the general perspective of the industry, there are people who ask me self-related questions. And those are the questions that I want to answer today. And the first question that a lot of people ask me is, what is the most important thing for me as a driver in the taxi industry? The most important thing that you need to take care of is your accounts. Don't play around with your Uber account, with your Bold account, with your Faras or Litrocab. Ensure that your app or your account never gets blocked. Things that can get you blocked out, like soliciting for offline trips, like soliciting for extra payment, like reckless cancelling of trips, all, you know, KRS uh, failure to accept trips and you are online. Those things can get you in trouble. And that is why you find so many drivers who are out there and they don't make a lot of money because they don't operate on all the Uber, on, on all the taxi platforms. So for me, take care of your taxi account so that it does not get blocked. The second one, the question that the second question that most people ask me is what type of clients do I prefer most? I'm out there driving to make money. So the type of people I carry, in my view, it doesn't count. But the type of people I really prefer and I love carrying are people who, when they get inside my car, they sit at the co-driver seat, especially when they are just one individual. I don't mean to say that I don't like those who sit at the back left or right behind the driver. But, you know, for me, I feel comfortable with someone who gets in my car and just sits in front together with me, especially when it is just the two of us. People who prefer to sit behind, I actually don't even chat them that much because I feel like there are people who have reservations, there are people who want to have a reserved space, people who want literal interactions, while I'm very, very you know, talkative while driving. So if you come and just sit right behind, I feel a little bit not very comfortable but you know that is the preferred sitting position for riders so the third one what are the most annoying type of customers for me also i don't care whether you annoy me or not what i would love is to pick you on time drop you on time and you pay me but of course there are some better situations that can happen so that you don't get me annoyed People who can easily annoy me are people when I call to pick them and I ask them where they are and they tell me to use the pin. There are people who really have that very bad character. If you see a driver calling you to ask you where you are, it's because they need help. Maybe the map is not giving them the right location or the right direction. Just humble down and just say where you are and try to give direction to the best of your capability. The second category of people who annoy me so much are people who will not talk to you during the whole trip and when you are very very close to getting to the destination they become experts in giving direction those are the two categories of people who annoy me so much but there are this other category of people who also want to direct you as a driver especially the elderly men you know people over 45 years they rarely sit in the car and fail to tell you when to take a U-turn, when to make a turn, even when you are very, very far from the destination. So they are like, you know, the co-drivers, they are like your navigators. So they are telling you, turn here, turn here, don't turn there. Sometimes I feel very, very uncomfortable uh, riding people who are, you know, giving you direction or advising you on how to drive while you have been doing this for a long time alone. The third question that people ask me so much is have i ever been involved in a road accident i thank god that has not happened and i pray that it will never happen however of course being on the roads so frequently with small cars that get into very very tight and tiny roads my car has had several body scratches 
which you repair very fast and you go back on the road. But myself as an individual, I thank God. What app do I prefer most? Definitely, there are so many apps that I exist there in the market, Uber, Bolt, RetroCab, and whatever. But this app, I use them strategically. When I am in a particular situation, there is an app that I prefer more than the other. But overall, there is no one app that will give you more money than the other. But there is one that will save you out of certain situation better than the other. For instance, if you are in a high demand area, like Isli, like town, I always use Bolt. Why? Bolt has very, very crazy surge prices. The way sometimes riders will enjoy low prices when there are many cars around, it's the same way that the same riders will pay huge amounts when there are no cars around. So when you are in town, you are in, in sleep, switch off bold, switch off Uber, switch off Litrocab and the rest because their surge amount is not as much. But Bolt can actually multiply the fare by 2.5 if the demand is too high. Secondly, Bolt will also give you very good destination trips. So let's say that I am very far away from home. And then I say I want to go back to Kasarani and maybe I'm in Mo along Mobasa Road. I normally utilize Bolt because Bolt will give me close to home trips compared to what Uber does. If you want to enjoy long trips during the day, some people say that Uber does better on that. Okay, Uber is not very popular with very short distance uh, trips. But Bolt will do that. They will, they will give you trips of 50, uh, 150 shillings, 200, like so many short distance trips. On the other hand, Litrocab will give you corporate trips. If you want to avoid cash, okay, so that you don't misuse. If you want to carry company clients who pay through bank and then your money is stored by Litrocab and you only receive it on Saturday as a huge amount, you can utilize Litrocab. But one app that you should never fail to have is Bolt. Bolt has demand. Bolt will give you work. Whether it is very little pay per trip, but you will not stay without driving. Other apps might have better rates sometimes on average, but they don't have as much demand. How do I maintain a positive attitude in an industry that is full of negativity? That is a very interesting question. A very interesting question, I mean. This industry, as I, have, as I have mentioned many times, and I came here to try and portray the other side of the business. Of course, if every business went out there to talk about their challenges, then we would all be out here talking about the negative side. But how do I maintain a positive attitude in an industry that is full of negativity? How I do it? is by focusing on the final results by the end of the day. I deliberately decided not to focus on what I get per trip. If I carry you, we are stuck in traffic, I feel frustrated, I drop you to your destination and you pay me 200 shillings, I always tell myself that is not final, that is not my client, my final client. I will continue. And true to the fact, by the time I go home, let's say it's on a Saturday, I start driving at around midday, and I go home at around 9 p.m. in the evening, and I look at the money that I have as cash or as my m -Pesa balance, I always feel good. And that makes me forget about every other trip that gave me challenges. One advice I always give to drivers, stop focusing on single trip outcome that will frustrate you because this business you'll never make good money from a single trip and the same thing one single trip should not contribute to your entire attitude one single trip should not make you negative about a whole industry so always be checking what have you achieved throughout the day are you proud of the 3000 that you get that you get home with are you proud of what you make at the end of the day. If, you know, to be honest, every driver should be proud of what they take home by the end of the day.
Okay? If that day is not very positive, then focus at the end of the two days, at the end of the week, and ultimately at the end of the month. If you don't make money that you are proud of at the end of the month, then your ambitions are too high than what the industry can offer. And then the last question is, do I do taxi full-time? This question I have answered a million times. I do it part-time, but I have employed full-time drivers who operate my other cars. So full-time experience as a driver, I learn it from my drivers. Part-time experience, I learn it from myself. Most of the time, I do it on Saturday or Sunday when I have time. Not always. If you check my account, you'll see maybe I drive three, four, five days per month. But sometimes if I'm going to town for my own affairs, I put destination trips, I carry a person to town, and then when I'm coming back, I put destination again, I get a trip of a person who is coming back to the place where I am going. So most of the time, that is how I utilize my account. So when I go to drop my wife to work, you know, when she's going for night shifts, I drop her. When I am coming back, I come back with a client because you can take advantage of the destination trips. And that is why I tell everyone who has a small car, you must always have your PSV documents in place. Even if you are not going to operate as a full-time driver, there is no need for you to drive to town alone and come back alone. While if you had the document, you could have carried someone and come back with someone and pay for the fuel. I hope I have helped you through my personal experience by answering those questions. Have a good evening.